Hey guys, Mark Jacobs Simran here, and this is a short little video of me unboxing my, if I can find the logo, Nixie Wizard Controller. So, first off, before I start uh, saying anything on here, this is not sponsored at all. It'd be cool if it was someday, but uh, I asked for this for my birthday myself, my parents out for me. So, um, I'm just opening this because I thought it'd be cool and fun to show you guys. So, uh, and also, if you were able to see my desk from there, ignore how messy it might look. So, I haven't opened this up yet, but we're gonna uh, see what this thing has in store. I have watched some videos on it, and that's what made me, that's a, how I found this controller, and made me want to get it. So, it only took two weeks out of the three weeks. So, that's cool. Okay, and uh, I hope that they put the... Apparently whenever I got this though, I saw that it was supposed to come with this little green Easter egg stand, which I haven't seen yet, but it comes in a box and plastic, so this thing won't get messed up at all. I do like the design of this, so that's awesome. The Nixie Wizard. And it works for the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Lite, and OLED, obviously, so. And obviously it's gonna tell you guys uh, the stuff on the back, so like, Hall Effect Joystick. Uh, and, uh, we'll go over all that once I start getting it out of the box for you guys, so you guys can see the difference. And I'm, so, yeah. Let's go and continue unboxing this thing. Okay, it's got, you know, not very fun. I mean, I did uh, see that it was being shipped directly from China, which I don't really like anything that's going in China, but I don't know, they could have done a little bit better job with making the box a little bit cleaner, but that this isn't about a box. This is about the controller. Also, I'm pulling it upside down. Now, you guys can't see it from here, but you know what? Let me just do this. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to be probably editing this a lot later. So, all right. Pack accessories. Alright then. What's in the store? What is in the... Oh hey, there we go. So I did get that down here in the bottom after all. This thing was a little bit opened up, but oh well. Whether or not I'll actually use this, we'll see. I've been wanting to get a Nintendo one officially, so. Okay, this, this looks exactly like I thought it was going to be, so it's a little tiny stand to put your Nintendo Switch on when you're playing games. Use BC on the back. I might or might not use that, but we'll see. Alright, let's take that out. Comes with a little manual. I can get it out. Product manual. I might need that because I, uh, I don't know how often I'll ever use the uh, one of the features I know I saw it had. Ooh. Okay, it's a uh, honestly a little bit bigger than I thought. I mean, I do see what they're talking about. It has this interesting feeling to it. Here, let me go and set this down, and I'll uh, obviously I can't show show you guys or have you guys feel the difference. It. Let me just grab my actual GameCube controller and the Power A GameCube controller, and then I'll try to. I'll explain the difference as best I can. Okay, so comparing it to how it feels, it's got the same uh, shape or feeling to it whenever you're holding it. So I'm com right now I'm comparing it to the Power A controller. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit wider, which I definitely don't mind that. Uh, so it does have a more accurate, and you know, hold on, I got the that wrong reel. GameCube controller. The actual purple one. Because I remember somebody saying about the color. The color scheme of it. Obviously the color is a little bit different between this one and this one. It looks kind of gray on my screen, but it actually is closer to... Here's my actual GameCube controller. It's actually... Actually, I think it's the perfect color. Mine's just a little bit more shiny because I've owned my GameCube for about 18 years now. But, uh, I promise you that it actually is the same color. So, it's, maybe that's what I'm used to. More shiny and kind of soft feel. This has a more 
matte kind of texture to it. Uh, not only that, um, what else was there? Hmm. Okay, actually the joysticks actually feel a lot like the both of these GameCube controllers, so there's that. I don't, honestly, I like it. It doesn't, even though they said that this uses Hall Effect, what was it, Hall Effect? And yes, I got the website up right here. That is she is. Hall Effect joysticks. I've never had any joystick problem with my actual Joy-Cons, um, but uh, I know that they said this uses magnets in it whenever I did my research. Uh, magnets instead of actual, uh, except something else that keeps track of the movement. That, and I feel like these, I'm going into a lot more detail, I need to. These joysticks on here, they have a look and more of a feel of like, I think what Xbox One controllers are. They're concave, they have a bit of a grip to it, rather than where these used to have this. Honestly, I kind of liked this before, but that's a personal preference. Um, what else was there? We'll test this out on the Switch in just a minute. Um, comparing to the actual original one, so, and honestly, I, uh, the, the original ones, they have analog and digital. I keep forgetting which one's which. I think, uh, analog is like on and off. Digital has, uh, like, more than just a one and a zero. It's like going tons of little increments in between them. So, like, I don't know if you could even hear this, but... That's it, close my door. So, I'm not even clicking yet, but now you're clicking it. I guess in terms of Super Mario Sunshine, that's why I would like that better. And then, doesn't make a loud sound, which I like. It's the, still the original controller, but that's a Z button. And then, obviously the soft feeling of the uh, buttons versus these. This is the Nixie Wizard still, so. Honestly, the buttons feel a lot closer to the GameCube one, so it. Yeah, this, the Nixie, its buttons have a, a closer feel to the GameCube controller versus the Power A GameCube controller, which I like that. That's a plus. Um, what else was there? The, uh, Okay, comparing. Oh. Hmm. I know there is a wired Power A one, but this, the wireless one. Hmm. I mean, it's. I guess it's a good uh, L and R button, the thinner ones on the Nixie Wizard. But honestly, I kind of like the. How uh, mushy and spacey this one is. And I could definitely tell this is all analog on here. Not digital. I would have liked to have seen maybe in another version. If uh, Nixie, if you're watching this video, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing another version of this where the ZL and ZR have analog and digital. Especially for uh, uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars where they brought back uh, Super Mario Sunshine in one of them. Because uh, I definitely would like to be able to use the flood feature in it, so, which I don't think I'd be able to really with this, unless the buttons are mapped differently and I just forgot. Um, other than that, D-pad definitely feels a lot bigger. <laughs> comparing, going back to comparing the Nixie to the GameCube. And actually is a little bit bigger, even though you can't quite tell that much. Okay. That's enough uh, talking about this for probably almost 10 minutes now. So, let's get in. First of all, I need to see. Oh, wait. These don't have batteries in it. Eh, it's going to probably take a while for it to charge up. Dang it. I just realized that. I forgot. So, maybe that's another thing I wish this thing had was batteries. Not only just charging up that way, but maybe a battery option instead. Uh, I do remember somebody else mentioning that. Uh, since these are Joy-Cons, they still do actually have SL and SR in the middle. And also, different feeling... It almost has kind of a graded texture to it and a feeling to it. Uh, I'm probably weird enough I might actually try it. 
like this sometimes just to see how well I like it. I mean, because it still works. It, it'll just be weird, especially with this side. But, uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and see how this looks on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so, now we're back over here to the Switch. So, and, yeah, the texture does feel a little bit different and looks different than this one. I don't know if the, there's a difference in the material that they used, but, I don't know, either way. Let's disconnect the original joysticks that came with it. Hopefully these will turn them out away, but since the battery's dead, I might have to wait. We'll see. So. Ooh. Okay, I like it already. Interesting feeling on there. Ooh, okay. This feels weird holding it like this because it, oh, I, don't know, I don't like my head cut off. This feels a little bit weird having it wider than what I'm used to because normally holding these <laughs> right here, which I don't even know how I'm going to show you guys. So normally this is how wide I'm used to holding it, but now it's out to here. So it probably gained like an extra inch or two, which I don't mind. Uh, but yeah, honestly, this feels natural to me. It paired right away. Let's see what they call the controllers. It does have vibration. I don't know if you could hear that, but. Hmm. Either way, uh, it does vibrate. It looks like they're listed as gray joy cons which um, i think honestly someday i would love to see nixie partner with nintendo and actually have their own style of like half of a gamecube controller uh some other plus things under which i will show you guys in a minute besides the fact that there are lights uh echo turn off pixar 2 mm -hmm. so uh so, so you guys can see a little better there is some uh two lights on the top of each of these showing that there's power to it. Another uh, cool feature that I like about this is that the A, B, X, and Y uh, buttons do uh, light up, which I wish my phone would uh, like to focus on it, but it does not want to. So, other than that, um, the turbo feature, uh, let's see, Echo, turn on Pixar 2. I was reading up on it. I don't know if I'll ever do it, use it, Echo, turn on Pixar 2. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, what was it? To use the turbo feature, I believe you press the T button first, and then... Okay, no, that wasn't it. Never mind. It was... Uh... Okay, no. I need to do more research on that. So, obviously, I've got a ways to go. Um, I might put in a little clip after this video is over showing how the turbo feature works because I need to do a little more research into it. That's why I'll never use, probably never use the turbo feature. Or, I mean, this, I might look into it later on. It has mappable buttons on the back. Like right now, they don't add up to any button, but it was labeled as FR and FL. So you can keep your, as they say on their website, so you can keep your fingers on the joysticks. Well, uh, instead of having to press buttons, you can map these buttons on the back of the wizard to do other functions that normal Joy-Cons would. Uh, not only that, let's see. I remember, I almost forgot what the cogs are. So I'll explain that at the end of the video too, but there's two cog... Uh, two cogwheel or setting buttons right there. Then we got the home button, screenshot button, and then plus and minus. Last thing before I forget about it is the fact that it comes with extra little, oh, where is it? There we go. Okay, so actually, yeah, it comes with these extra little rings right here. So they're circular. And from what I was uh, learning, if you are playing more uh, racing game, uh, or if you just like the feel of having a circle ring in seven uh, octagonal. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, I is smart. <laughs> uh, if you want 
less of an octagonal shape and more of a circle shape. The best way I could think of taking it off, besides that you twist it counterclockwise, because there's these little uh, things to hold on to. If I can get it, hold on. It's kind of a uh, little bit difficult to do, which is why I'll probably never do this myself. Um, come on, come on, work with me here. Work. Okay, so you're gonna have to use your fingernails if you have any a little bit to turn it a little bit. Best way I could think of taking this off, I've seen multiple people uh, like pull the whole entire joystick off, which you can do that uh, to take off the ring. I've seen other people bang it. I honestly, uh, Nixie, uh, if any, uh, by the works of Nixie's watching this, I think what you a good idea might be is if it's possible maybe add some sort of little tiny little notch to like fit our finger under so then we can pull it up. At least that's how I would go about it because if I ever switch these out I'd like to do it in a safe way rather than just rather than just have to pull the whole joystick out just to change it. It's so like I'll go ahead and do it right now but I'd rather not have to do it. So yeah, I guess you could see their Hall Effect joysticks in there. But yeah, see, I'd rather not have to do that just to change out the ring. It doesn't seem economical to do it that way. But as I was saying, you can change it uh, out the octagonal rings for the included circle rings. For me, I like the nostalgic look, so I'll probably never use these as often. And I'll probably just keep the actual uh, ones that came with it on there. Yeah, other than that, also make sure whenever you put the joystick back on, it has kind of a, a kind of an ovalish shape on there. Make sure you put it back on the right direction. That way you don't mess up your joystick and all. Just give me a second. Then watch will try a game to see how much I enjoy it. So, and then whenever you put it back on, whenever you choose the ring that you want, you just put it back on. It has these little notches right there. Put it, you put the hook right in. Put, oh, okay, okay. Um, so you put it in, push it till it kind of snaps, and twist, and it'll be vertical up and down with these other little tiny dots that it lines up to on there. So there you go. That's how you change out those. So, now that we're at the end of the video, uh, there's some things I thought of on how, uh, on what you might be able to improve on Nixie. So, I know I've seen some people talk about like how thin the switch is and how much of a gap. It's kind of interesting and I don't see much of a wiggle. Maybe I'm just lucky that I don't, but I think what a good idea might be for possible extra support is if it's even possible to add like more railings right here. I think it'd be cool to maybe have like a kind of a curvy shape to go from here to touch this at least so. Uh, nobody has a chance of like wiggling this so much like that uh, another thing is regarding this piece i know for uh since it this thing does it only comes with one usb to usb c charging cord i know that both of these have uh, each joy con has a usb c port on it i think to me i think it would be interesting to um have the centerpiece have like a make it like one of the Joy-Con charging grips that Nintendo has for the, uh, the Joy-Cons like if that's even possible on here whether it adds a port on the bottom or the top I know it'd be a little more of expense probably but I think it'd be a very uh, worthwhile investment to get other than that I love this even though I haven't played a game but um, let's see uh, Let's see how it goes. So I'll be right back after I learn how to use the turbo feature. <laughs> okay, I'm back and I know how to use this now. So, first of all, the turbo feature. On the bottom of each joystick, there's a button that has a letter T on both of them. So, that just means, so like right now I'm on the input screen. If I just press it once, it just presses it once. And that's it. But if I hold down the button and I do, and I, uh, press a button now uh, those lights you guys saw earlier now this one on the 
I guess on your left, on the right Joy-Con, now has tur means that turbo is activated when it's blue. So, and uh, one way how to get rid of the turbo whenever you're done, you just hold this down. So one, two, three, and then it turns back to solid white. Same thing goes for mapping the buttons on the back of the controller. So, in order to do that, I remember seeing you press the cog button right here, and that's gonna blink blue until you press. So now, I hit the back button, and it'll uh, blink every about every time that you press it on the back. So, that's for button combos. You could also do button combinations for games like Super Smash Bros, for instance. So, let me clear that. One, two, three, and it goes back to white. So, if I press it again, I do B, A, B, X, Y, and then I press the cog. It also uh, keeps in mind of the speed that you press the buttons too, which I find as a really cool feature. Um, yeah, it's like A, B, X, Y. It's so cool. Same thing to clear that. You hold down the cog again. One, two, three, and then it goes back to Y. Same thing applies for the other side of this. Other than that, uh, I think like I said before, I don't really have any complaints. Uh, so I know some people were talking about the viewing angle. I'm used to holding my game controller like this, so honestly, it's flat uh, going against my face. Whereas, I don't know why, but some people apparently hold their controllers like this. I'm I'm weird. I'm weird like that. Uh, don't ask me why. It's just how I am. So, yeah. Other than that, I honestly think this controller is awesome. I would definitely recommend people get this. Uh, now I just gotta buy the case that I saw that came out for it. Uh, I don't know, make it easier for me to carry it instead of just having to carry it separately in a different case or bag or something. But other than that, uh, like I said, I do love this. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, as of right now, when I bought it from their website, it was $70, but it's free shipping. If you pay over, I think it was... 49 so hey there's that um yeah so uh then nixie if you're listening in on this i would say i definitely would take the suggestions or listen to the suggestions i made like uh which i'll repeat again it was maybe making a small little like curved piece or maybe just a whole flat piece that you can attach on the bottom or the back of this or somewhere to make it uh less to make it uh less bendable I guess I have I don't notice it bendable that much but I'm not forcing it to because I don't want to uh, so there was that maybe possibly where was that middle piece at maybe make this so it can charge the joy cons all at once instead of having to charge them one at a time if you don't have it connected to the switch to charge um what else was it this was a side thought in my head but it would be interesting if it had Honestly, I would kind of like it, uh, a place where you can put like a little strap around uh, this middle piece of it, just like you can for the Joy and Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. But yeah, other than that, uh, that's it for this unboxing video. Uh, if you guys have more questions, and, or if you want to tell me, hey, uh, make this video shorter next time for unboxing video, uh, all I can say is, I'll try. Uh, I had so much fun and so much stuff I wanted to go over with seeing in the other videos. I tried to make this as fun as possible. I highly doubt I did that. But other than that, uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see me do unboxing videos like this more often. Uh, then after that, hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. Uh, because I would try to upload videos on Saturdays at noon whenever possible. So, and sometimes live streams. So. Other than that, uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Bye-bye.